All right, so today I'm going to show you uh, the revamped version for the 2017 Super Duty LED kits that I'm selling. Um, we made some better improvements, and today I have a 2017. This is the gas model. This is not a diesel. So on the diesels, you have to take the grill off because you cannot get the side marker lights for the LEDs. On the gas versions, you can get to it pretty easy without pulling the whole grill off. So a little bit different. I've seen people on YouTube they're saying, "Oh, you don't have to take the headlights off to get to, uh, or the grill off to get to the bulbs." But on the diesels, there's more there, and it's more of a pain to to take everything out as far as your battery box and stuff like that than it is to pull the grill off. Um, so, anyways, this is the gas version, so we're gonna run right through this. It's gonna be very easy. I'm gonna show you the kit. So, the first thing you're gonna get is two sets of the H13s. Um, they're, so you're going to get two sets of these, so two, you're going to get two boxes because you have two H13s, there's one here on the top, one here on the bottom. We're also going to do fog lights, so it's going to be a whole other kit for the fog lights. Um, then you have your turn signals, so these are the front switchback bulbs and we're going to pop those in and then we have our front marker bulbs, so these are going to go in the front markers. We have the brake lights. Um, rear license plate lights. Now, th the reverse bulbs. There's a difference in the trucks with the bliss systems. If you have a bliss system, you're gonna take these bulbs here. If you do not have a bliss system, it's a hit and miss on what your bulb is. So you need to take your housing apart and take the, uh, re the reverse bulb out and see if it's a 7443 or a 3157. Um, these ones are a little different. They have a little ballast to them. They're a lot brighter than these ones, but these will only work on trucks that do not have a bliss system. Um, I like running these ones. They work really good. Um, these are Crees, so they're pretty bright, pretty reliable. Um, I have them on my personal truck. I really love them. So um, that's the difference between these. The only uh, difference is this is a 3157. You can tell it's square. This is a 7443. It's not square, it's more, you can tell the difference in the bulbs and the, the base. So that's how you know if you have a 3157, uh, which is this bulb, or a 7443, which is this bulb. So if you look at the base of it, that's how you can tell. So, let's go ahead and do the install. I'm going to show you how to pull the headlights, uh, do the headlights, marker lights, and turn signals on this. You'll notice I'm not running any resistors whatsoever. I have a new thing that we're going to, um, that I'm going to show you guys how to program your truck. Um, I sell the OBD2 connectors with the CD and we're going to I'm going to show you on the laptop how to actually program your truck to do different things. You can shut off your flash, uh, the hyper flash. You can do what's called a Bambi mode. Um, the Bambi mode allows you to when you have your fog lights on and your headlights on, when you hit your high beams, you'll notice that your fog lights shut off. This is going to allow you to keep the fog lights on when you do hit your high beams. So I like that mode. Um, it works really good on these trucks. So you can have all six lights lighting up at once on high beam. Um, another thing you can do is you can change your TPMS. You can um, customize, uh, like this truck doesn't have the uh, seat heaters and coolers like that. But if you want, you can change your blower speed. Um, I give you a whole sheet of things that you can modify um, on different modules. So we're going to talk about that after we install all the lights and walk you through how to install these lights on this truck. Like I said, the diesels, you got to pull the grill, it's a little bit more of a pain, but um, once you put everything in, it's not too bad. So let's go ahead and start the install. Okay. Alright, so we're going to start with the passenger side. On this side, you can remove this clip. I have a specialty tool here but a screwdriver sometimes works. Just remove this one clip here. Now on each side you're going to locate these two tabs. Okay, There's this tab here that pushes in and then there's one over here and you push this one in. Okay, Then it should pop right on out. So you can see these two, two clips here, one here and one here. So we're just going to lay this on the side. Now you have full access to 
your turn signals and your um, headlights. So the headlights, you just twist these out. Just like that. Okay. And always on these headlights, push on the button. There's a little clip right here. Okay. You want to Push on this tab, and then you can push it into the bulb first, and then pull the bulb out. So sometimes it doesn't uh, get past this tab here. So if you just push it in and pull it, sometimes you break the clip off of the um, connector. Second, you're going to have your turn signal, which is another, just twist it. and. This is what I mean by the 7443. All the turn signals are 7443. And then you have your bottom light. Again, just twist it out. on the tab, push it, pull. Okay, and then we're going to go ahead and plug our bulbs in. So you can see our bulbs here. No ballast, no nothing. Just plugs directly in, put it in, and twist. Make sure that the wires, um, you'll notice that if it's in right because the wires usually dang below. If it's up like this, it's in wrong. also have our marker lights here, so these ones twist out too, and you just pull your marker light out. So we'll replace those as well. Now, when you put these in, turn your parking lights on first. Parking lights only, no headlights. These are polarity sensitive. So you just plug it straight in. And these are a real tight fit. That's what they look like. So once your marker lights in, there you go. So you'll know if you unplug them both, the difference between the top and bottom LED or the bottom headlight or the top headlight and the bottom headlight. Top one has a gray uh, wire loom. So we'll just plug these in, just like that. Also, if you take these bulbs out, see how this one is missing? There's an orange silicone rubber that's supposed to look like this. If it's not on the bulb, then it's stuck to the back of the housing. So just reach back in there and peel that off, and this will stay. This is supposed to go on the bulb. So if you forget to take these off, or if they don't come out with the bulb, the LED won't go in correctly. There's that one, and then we'll plug in the passenger side, just like that. So we reach all the way down again. This one has the silicone on it, it didn't come off.
Next is our turn signal. This should light up white. Okay. Just like that. So there's your turn signal bulb right there. It's going to be white. When you hit your flasher, it's going to blink amber. It will blink normally outside of the truck. You'll just have your hyper flash inside of the truck. So. So you can see the difference in the parking lights here. So I'm going to go ahead and insert the key into the ignition and show you the hyper flash and what it's going to do. If it doesn't bother you, you don't have to program your truck, but turn the key on. Okay. And you can see it blinking fast and this one blinks normal. There's a normal blink. So if we go to the outside of the truck. See how it's blinking normally? And it's blinking amber. When you turn your head your blinkers off, it switches back to white. Now I'll show you the difference in the headlights. Go ahead and turn our headlights on. There's the LED for you, and there's the halogen. Okay. So now we're going to change out the fog lights. On the driver's side, it's just as easy. You can see all the connectors. Right there, the top one's the um, top headlight bulb, and then the brown is your turn signal, and then the one on the bottom down there is the uh, other headlight bulb. So those are really easy to get to. And then the side one right here, let's see if I can leave this in here. This one right here, hand in here with the camera. Okay, there's your marker bulb so again polarity sensitive make sure your parking lights are on when you put these in um, and then so we're gonna go ahead and plug the driver side in really quick and then we'll do the fog lights all right so we get the headlights in turn signals in let's do the fog lights real quick fog lights are pretty easy on this truck especially if you got smaller hands you just got to go up underneath this find the bulb turn it uh, counterclockwise and pull it out okay and then on these clips right here you just push this clip back like that and it unpins these are polarity sensitive too yellow wire is hot so if you look on this connector you'll see it with a plus sign right there okay and negative so just make sure that these things clip in Okay, once you got the light turned on there, I'm just gonna reach up in here. Again, make sure that the wire is down before you put it in. Makes it a little easier. Just gonna get it in the hole. Alright, so there's your fronts. LED on everything. On the driver's side fog lights, the same thing. Just reach in from behind. Okay. Get your hand up and behind.
behind this and you can reach from underneath. Now let's focus on the tail lights. Alright, so on the brake lights, 8mm socket. That's pretty good. Two screws. Now, if you notice on the side, this is a non-bliss truck. Usually on the on the bliss ones, it'll say radar back here with the little antenna symbol. So this is a non-bliss truck. So I don't know what it has for a reverse light, um, but I do know what it has for brake lights. On these ones, you remove the two screws and you want to pull the head the tail light out at, towards the side. So now you got grayish bottom, black top, green reverse. So that's a 7443, okay? So pop these out. are polarity sensitive as well. So, go ahead and turn the parking lights on. Okay, and you can see that. Those lights look the same. Okay. Now, on the reverse light, what you need to do go into the cab, set your parking brake, grab the key here, turn your key on, okay, step on the brake, put your car in reverse, okay, reverse lights on, Plug this in. Boom. Just like that. So this, just put back together. Black on top. Just like that. This, it doesn't clip in, it just pushes in. Okay? Just like that. And then, what I try to do is the LEDs on this. You want them side to side, so just make sure it's as vertical as you can get it on the stem, and just push it in. Another thing is, these are kind of cool because they glow in the dark once you light them up, so when we shut the lights off, you'll see that. Bottom brake light, just push it in. You can tell the difference between actually so we can rotate this and see how it looks. parking lights here and your reverse light. Go ahead. Notice again, no resistors. Everything plugged straight in. Don't have to do anything with resistors and stuff like that. Go ahead and tighten this up. Okay, we'll go to this side. 
Do the same thing on the driver's side. These are gonna get hot. If it's really bright, you want it to be dim. So if you plug it in and it's bright, unplug it, flip it 180, and plug it back in, you'll see it be a little dull. Okay? You want it to be dull just with the parking lights on. Okay. Reverse bulb. You can see how I'm putting it in. Up and down like that, and then just push it in. Okay, plug it in, boom, just like that. And then you just line up your holes, boom, and then your screws in. see how bright let me see if I can get the camera to focus and I won't even focus because it's too damn bright so we'll go ahead and turn put this truck back in park now get your emergency flasher okay and you'll notice that your brake lights are working normally. Okay. Turn your emergency flasher off. Okay. Just keep your parking lights on. And now we're complete with this. We'll do the um, reverse light. Alright. I'm at... Uh do your tag lights here so you put your hand up right here okay through this way and you can reach and unscrew this and pull this out okay pull your bulb out again make sure your your parking lights are on plug your bulb in and reach back in here you can see it go in and it just twists in so you don't have to Disconnect anything. Let's see if it's plugged in. Let's see if I can find the uh, keyway on that. It's a little difficult, but not too bad. Okay. And then on the driver's side, do it the other hand. Just reach in here. Make sure you're not grabbing the backup sensor. Bulb out. Again, these are polarity sensitive, so they don't turn on when you plug them into the socket. Okay. You want to make sure these tabs, sometimes it helps you pull these tabs out a little bit. Okay, so they stick out. Get a good connection. Okay, plug in like that. your tag lights now I do have a light for the um, the bed light on the top the cab light um, they're 250 bucks I believe or $200 um, but they don't work on the trucks 
uh, the Super Duties that have um, uh, cameras back there. I think some of them have cameras. Um, but other than that, um, I do sell them. We're not going to change this one out. Um, but now we're going to go ahead and run through the uh, programming. All right, so now the programming of the vehicle, okay, 2017. I give you guys these with the kit, the OBD2 switches, okay. Um, they do come with a CD, but you shouldn't need the CD, okay. So what you need to do first, before plugging this in, is go on the internet, okay. Go to Forescan, focus in on this, Forescan.org, okay. Then you're going to go to download, and you're going to download the Forescan version 2.3.12 beta for Windows, and it's free, okay? After you do this, you need to go to form, right here at the top, once you install the, um, the software. Then you need to go to register, there's going to be a sign over here on the top right hand corner that says register. You need to register um, with the form, it's free. Uh, you don't have to put any credit card information or nothing. Just put your, your email in and your uh, name and make up a password and you're good to go. In about 30, 30 minutes to an hour, you'll get an email saying that your account is now activated. Then what you need to do is you need to go to your, go back into, you log in, okay? Go back to the form, go to uh, general and support form. And you're going to go to standard and extended licenses for Windows. Okay. Go into here. If you scroll down. And you're going to see generate trial license. Once you get your. Click onto this. Put your, your name, phone number. And the hardware ID is inside of the Forescan. Okay. So go into Forescan. We're going to open this up. Okay, go down to the steering wheel at the bottom, and then right here where it says extended license, mine's already activated, but here it'll tell you license ID number. So inside of here, you're going to put that ID number in. Once you generate a trial license, it'll show, show up right here. Okay, it'll show up your hardware ID, registration, and then it's going to say download. You download this and save it to your desktop. Once you save it to your desktop, you're going to have a white folder like that. Go into your Forescan. I'm going to keep adjusting the brightness on this thing. Um, go back to the steering wheel at the bottom and put that nice, uh, it'll, there'll be a box or whatever it says upload or attach file license or whatever. You're going to hit that and you're going to find that white folder on your desktop and hit, hit, um, you know whatever it says to do it's gonna just upload it into the system once it does it says your file is now registered whatever so now you're set plug in your OBD2 connector and when you plug in your OBD2 connector and you go to your settings here and you go to devices it should show that Bluetooth or your um, your USB connector right here if it says unknown device it hasn't uploaded the driver set so you either need to use a CD or just give it a second, plug, unplug it, plug it back in. Little things should pop up down here and it'll say uh, um, downloading uh, software. So with that being said, I can see my USB things plugged in. I got a light on. Okay. So I'm good to go. So we're going to go ahead and exit out of my computer settings here. Back into Forescan. Okay. Plug this into your OBD2 port in the truck. Make sure that your switch is upwards right now okay plug this in okay turn your key on key is on okay so now it says right here it doesn't see a vehicle let it focus real quick okay now we need to Go to the top, and let's find this car. Okay, key is on, um, vehicle's not moving, okay, hit okay. 
and you can see the check marks. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, it found the module. Good. Tells you the vehicle, tells you everything, so it's going to go ahead and do its thing here. And then as soon as it finds all the modules, okay, so this little thing pops up and it says you need to switch to MS scan modules, okay? Yes, it does have a switch, okay? Flip the switch down on the OBD2 connector. Hit yes. Hit okay. And then it's going to continue on with reading the rest of the modules. Okay. So it's just pulling up and finding all the modules that are installed on this truck. That's all it's doing right now. I already have a profile set up for this truck in, in this computer, so if you don't, if you didn't plug this into your truck before, it, it'll ask you if you want to just pull up the last, since it, it recognizes its profile or whatever. So anyways, we're good to go now. Okay, it's found all of its modules. So now I want to program the body control module to get rid of this, okay, since we just did our LED lights installed. Okay, so we're going to go to this guy right here, the square. And then here's all your modules. So I need to go to, I'm gonna use my mouse so you can see what I'm doing. Body control module. Okay. Click on that and then click on the play button at the bottom. Now it wants you to put the switch back up because it's gonna read the module differently. So switch back up and then click okay ta-da now now I'm in the body control module so now we need to change some things around you'll see front bulb turn outage okay go down to the bottom where it says right Click on this. Double click it. No outage. Check mark. We're going to change. That one's already no outage. And let's see here. Rear LED, rear turn bulb. Outage. Double click on this one as well. No outage. Check mark. No outage, no outage, remote start. You can change a bunch of these stuff if you wanted to. Like if you want to, you know, if you have a remote start and you want to turn the parking lights off when the remote starts going, that's another thing you can do. Okay, so that's done. Let's go ahead and write. So there's the stuff we're changing. Hit OK. Lights flash. Okay, now there's that. Let's see if the turn signal still has a hybrid flash. Okay, there's one more module that we need to do. Next one, oh, cyclic key. It says cyclic key on. Back on. Okay, it's still hyper flashing because outage ABM. This needs to be, oh, frequency selection too. Let's change that one. LED. Let's try that one first. I think it's a little different than the IDS, but let's go ahead and lights are going to flash again. Let's 
it's gonna say cycle the key off and back on. Okay. Still flashing fast. I believe it says eight outage ABM because that's the same one I changed on the IDS. Double click on that one. No outage. Cycle the key off and then back on. Look at that. Flashing normally now. Okay. There's your turn signals modified. you need to all right so this frequency selection here I changed that to LED but what that actually is in this program it's these lights up here if you have those changed to LEDs these won't turn off they'll just strobe on and off so make sure that stays on halogen okay so what we changed in the body control module front turn bulb no outage no outage um, outage ABM is no outage, okay, and then the LED turn, uh, rear bulb outage, no outage, no outage, okay, it's the only thing we changed to modify that, okay, now we're going to modify the front, um, headlights and fog lights, um, a lot of people, when they turn their headlights on and they have their fog lights going, uh, when you hit your when you hit your high beams, the fog lights will shut off. I think that's pretty annoying. So I like, you know, if you're gonna turn high beams on, the more light the better, right? So what we need to do is you need to go to get this to focus again. You need to go. So we're done with this page, so we can exit out. Okay, now you need to go to the as built file here and hit play. Come on. Hang on a second. Let's see it. Enable to close this out service so now you need to go to configuration body control module as built play yes I know it's not safe but I'm gonna do it anyway okay I give you a spreadsheet okay and what we're gonna change is There's one in here, it's called Bambi Mode on this front paper here. Okay. This allows LED fog to stay on when high beams are also turned on. This mode has been confirmed, blah, blah, blah. So, what we need to do is we need to find, we need to go to Body Control Module as Built, which that's what we're in right now. Body Control Module as Built format. We need to scroll down. So you have, uh, you need to find key position 726-7 or uh, 2701. So we're going to scroll down on this. 2701. I already changed it in here. So on, uh, what is it? Which number is it? Um, on yours, so 
since I already changed it on this truck. That last zero right there, under the 726-27-01, uh, yours will say one, change it to a zero, and then hit right, and it will completely, it'll do the same flash thing that the last thing did, and that changes, when the, when you're done with that, you'll, you'll write that, and then you're gonna exit out of this module, so we're gonna hit the stop button, Okay, so now when you turn your headlights on, okay, headlights are on, headlights are on there, let's turn the fog lights on, fog lights are on there, let's turn the high beams on, high beams are on, okay, so let's get out of the truck and look at this. So now you got all fog lights and headlights in high beams, okay. And that's what we want. All right. Now there's other things on this list that I give you. I give you some spreadsheets here. And that shows you how to change things. Um, I don't think there's anything else that this customer wanted turned off. But... I give you a couple spreadsheets. Um, if you have the the bigger stereo, um, there's more stuff that you can um, that you can do. Like um, you can put your if you have a diesel, you can put your DPF percentage up on the screen. That's another good feature. This is a gas truck, so it doesn't really make a difference. Um, other than that, um, we're pretty much set here. And no hyper flash, good to go. Okay, so if you have any questions, give me a call. I can help you out as much as I can over the phone. Um, otherwise, this is how you use this software. Another thing you can do, which is really nice, is you can go to uh, oscilloscope. Like you can pull up uh, your vehicle, you can scan. Um, you can scan for DTCs and stuff. There's other things you can do with this. Um, instructions are on the Forescan website. So if you go to the Forescan website, if you go here to Forescan, okay, and you go to documentation, you can do your pit settings here so it shows you how to do all that stuff and set up your pits so you can actually um, monitor different things pretty much everything that the Ford dealership can um, you can do whatever you want as far as you know seeing different things with your truck so if you have a, a check engine light on with your truck or anything or if you want to see your temperatures or something like that you can go in and use this same program same adapter and you can Get all your PIDs set up on your Forescan, and let's see here. Fog. I haven't really played around with this much, um, but I know you can put PIDs in here. But again, on their website, there's full instructions and documentation on how to, so how to access your PIDs and all that stuff. So again, if you need any help. There's the website for it. There's your information. Um, and again, if you have any questions, please feel free to email me or give me a call. Thanks again.